Tommy had become part of the ground. His nose did me long to scratch it. Maybe just nudged a little. But Pa said, don't move. Don't twitch, don't even breathe hard. He knows the woods, Pa told him. You'll never know he's there. Suddenly, he'll just be there looking at you. Just looking. Little Tommy Grimes one day dreams just to just be just like his father. His day is coming in the death of Tommy Grimes by R.J. Mead, though. It started so long ago, Tommy, remember? Almost a year when he was just 11. That night in the hen yard with, his we with the weasel's eyes glassed in the flashlight. He never fired a shot, just stood there with his mouth open, foolish while the weasel dashed to the woods. And Pa, knocking from, hit the rifle from his hands, why didn't you shoot? What are you waiting on? What's wrong with the boy? Pa, I just couldn't, Pa. I just couldn't. Never did like to kill nothing, now did you, boy? Even when he was small. He looked at the ground without saying anything. Tommy, a man always dies when he kills something, but it just plain has to be done. Some animals ain't no good and got to be killed. Understand? Tommy nodded without answering, still, still looking at the ground. Pa stood up with the groan and they walked into the hen house without speaking. They counted 43 dead pullets lying in red and white patches of feathers, blood, and confusion. So Tommy began to practice with the rifle, shooting at moving targets, and soon the rifle became part of his arm. He got so good that he could hit anything he aimed at, even things a good bit out. And sometimes, if he turned real quick, he could see pride in Pa's eyes. But then Pa would make his face blank and say, Well, Tommy, you're getting better, but you need more practice. And the time came last night and meant, when Pa came home and mentioned that some of the men were going into the forest to get a buck. And how it might be some good shooting because bucks were fast. Real fast. Pa, think maybe I could go at that go a time at that old buck? Boy, this ain't no old buck, it's a young one. Boy, you might get hurt. Well, sometime, I think I'd like to take my turn, Pa. Well, I'll think about it, boy. But Pa couldn't hide a gleam in his eye. Tommy laughed in his mind when he thought of the last time Pa had gone down to the hut for a drink with the boys, as he called them. And when he came out, his eyes were gleaming like, like the mischief, and he wobbled into the yard like he didn't know how to walk. Down in the forest is a beautiful thing, boy. Beautiful. All the colors and wild flowers, fresh streams, cool breeze. You feel it, boy. Feel it. Even though there ain't a sound, you feel it. You see a flash white, and you know some rabbit's going home. Or you might see some ch a, a chuck burring in. And the trees. They just stand there watching you. Been there before he came. Be there after he's gone. Gee, Pa, you make it sound so nice, I don't know as I want to go hunt tomorrow. It is nice, boy. Real nice. Things got to be done. Keep it that way. Fox hits the rabbit and keeps the rabbit pop population down. Else they'd overrun the land. Same here. You hunt because you hun you're hungry and you have to eat. That's one reason. Then you might hunt for sport. Pitch your mind against the animal cunning. Of course, I don't hold much with that. But some do. Some do. But there's some varmints that do damage and just plain got to be killed. Understand? I... I think so. But what about what you said about a man dying when he kills something? Man kills once and he starts to get callous. Next time, it ain't so hard. Then he gets so you make a decision and something's got to die and you kill it. Just like that. Then you have no feeling no more, boy. Then you're dead. You just ain't had time to lie down. Tommy wiggled his toes and got no response. They felt like sticks of wood, stilts that somebody glued onto his legs. The mist was thinning and the sun began to shine dully through the trees. Paul was right, he thought. It seems as if everything had a place in the scheme of things. Birds ate worms that they found on the ground. Then those birds got eaten by bigger birds. Rabbits got eaten by foxes, and foxes by bobcats, and bobcats by bears, or something all the way up to elephants. And elephants were killed by man. Pa said that Ma preyed on him, whatever that meant. But everything had a place. And when they got out of place, they upset the balance. Like too many rabbits or squirrels or anything. The silence somehow nettled him. The silence, not a sound. No crickets, no chirping, no rustling. 
Nothing. His chest hammered, almost pushing his lungs into his mouth with its, with its rhythm, rhythm, which seemed to be saying, Soon. Soon. Soon they would be calling him Tom Grimes like his father. Soon he would be able to go to the hut and drink liquor with the rest of the men. Soon the waiting would be over. Soon he would be grown. Soon. Soon. There, in the bushes, a little pinch of color behind the bramble bush. He slid down still further behind the gun and spread his feet wide, toes sticking into the soft earth. Put the whole side of your bun behind the gun to take the recoil, Pod said. Spread your legs wide to brace yourself. Make the gun, your arm, your hip, your leg into one long line. You won't see it, or hear it, or smell it, or anything, Todd told him. You'll just feel it, and it'll be there. Tommy breathed out and in, and began to squeeze the trigger lightly. Would it never go off, his mind asked, reeling and stumbling and desperately clinging to reality. But then the light blinked. His ears rang. His nose reacted to the smell of smoke and the taste of ink crept into his mouth. There was a rustling sound behind the bushes and a thrashing, a terrible thrashing rattling, but it stopped. Suddenly, it just stopped. Tommy blinked and it was over. Just like that, it was over. He got to his feet and the stiffness forced him to lean against a tree trunk. Tommy blinked and listened for the crashing sound of someone coming through the forest. But there was nothing. Nothing. He strained his ears and heard new sprung crickets and bird calls, but no crashing, no rustling, no voice. And he started for the bush and then stopped, trembling. Pa, he whispered. Pa. There was no sound except his own voice. And then came the rushing and the crashing to the left and a tall husky figure came out of the gloom saying, Boy, what's wrong, boy? Tommy ran over and slammed his head against his father's chest. Pa, I thought I killed you, Pa. I thought I killed a man. Now, Tommy, it's all right. Everything is all right. Pa said, walking behind the bush and kneeling and running, coming back. See, what did I tell you? Right through the heart. Now that's good shooting. What? Come on over here and look. Come on now. So he looked, and then it wasn't so bad. Later, they walked a mile from the town to the hut and walked inside together. There were some men sitting at tables as they looked up as Pa hoisted him onto the bar, running his fingers through his stark blonde hair. Boys, I want to tell you my boy became a man today. Yes, sir, killed his first slave. No, man said. Who? Swamp Buck got away from the chain gang yesterday. Yes, sir, got him right through the heart. The man grabbed Tommy by the knees and hugged him around the knees. You're a man now, boy. You're a real life, honest to goodness, for God man. And Pa, his blue eyes gleam. Bartender, don't just stand there. Give this man a drink. The man sat Tommy down on the bar as the liquor made him cough a bit as it coursed down his throat. It made his ears ring like the tolling of bells. But he smiled happily as the feeling of warmth like Mississippi sunshine spread through his insides. For now, he belonged. <laughs>